Dude, today I'm going back to my roots and we're going to be looking at the top 10 greatest rock bass tones of all time. So with that said, let's jump into it. Okay, so before we get into this, obviously I can't put this video together and not expect to be kind of like burned at the stake by some of you guys. Because you'd be like, why wasn't this in there? Why wasn't this? Oh, that's my house. I, I get it. I can't do, you know, I mean, I can't uh, cater for everybody. So this is like my Mine. top 10 greatest rock bass tones of all time. But we're gonna start in date order. Let's jump in. Originally recorded in 1965, although this version was recorded in 1967. It's obviously the godfather of rock bass. John Entwistle with The Who, and this is my generation. Just listen to this tone, it's frightening. And if you're wondering, he is playing with a pick, and that's why um, there's just a certain pick attack to the tone. Check this out. <laughs> Now, if you want to get that kind of thing down, most of that is actually just the A minor pentatonic scale, right? Check it out. So next up is John Paul Jones, and obviously with Led Zeppelin, and this is Lemon Song, recorded in 1969. Now, right around this time, John Paul Jones has been hugely influenced by James Jameson, who was obviously churning out all of those great Motown um, albums and tracks. And you can really hear that John Paul Jones is trying to cop that Jameson type of approach, but also his tone. And I think that this is really fantastic because it's, for me, the first time that you can really hear that, that I don't know, that sort of like Jameson old school tone, but applied in a rock context with obviously Led Zeppelin. Now check this out, this is the Lemon Song live, and as you can see, John Paul Jones is playing a jazz bass. And, and from my knowledge, I think that he did use a jazz bass on the Lemon Song, the original. If you know anything, you know, any other information about that, obviously let us know in the comments so, you know, all of the, other com the rest of the community can also learn, learn the truth. <laughs> right there by the neck. Applying a lot of walking bass style language there in a way, like Jameson did. So next up is the awesome Geddy Lee and the track is YYZ from the 1981 album Moving Pictures. Just a cracking bass tone, just real, like, a, oh, so meaty. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a little blast of the track and then we're going to listen to the isolated bass so you can really hear what's going on there as well. Check it out. So obviously that wasn't the original that I just played you there. It was like a live version, but this is the original track. I'm not sure whether he was using a jazz bass at this time. If you have more knowledge than I do, very likely. Let me know in the comments so everybody else can pick up that as well. Check this out. So this is the isolated bass track from the original. Can you hear how hard he's hitting that? Geddy plays right over here as well. He's not one of these guys that plays back at the bridge. He's really hitting through the string and that's what gives it that real percussive attack. You can actually hear it just <laughs> slapping against the fingerboard so hard, so good. So before we get into this, we just need to give a bit of love to Matt Sorum who just, it just kills it on drums here. This is Duff McKagan. Obviously, like I'm not sure whether you guys were into Guns N' Roses back in the day, but you guys that were like, Appetite for Destruction. Appetite for Destruction, can we just have some love for that album, please? Obviously, it was Guns N' Roses' debut album 
Ah, oh, it just blew my mind. Now I'm gonna show you a live version here, but the original version, definitely check that out. It was recorded in 1987. 1987, man, I was nine years old back then. But uh, just check this out. And Duff, on the original recording, was using a P bass, no, hang on. He was using a jazz bass special. Bill loved to Matt Sorum and check out this tone. And then we're gonna check out the isolated bass tone as well. Oh! Got the, the Doug McKagan chorus. Now this bass line's got a real great roll to it. It's got this dong dong. Check, check out the, this is, I'm gonna play the original track, the original isolated bass track from the original that was recorded in 1987. Check this. <laughs> Great top end to the sound. That's that roll. What a cracking bass tone. Now, if you listen to it, it's really interesting that you can hear that the way that Duff plays, the pick as he's. I wish I had a pick here today. Anyway. I'm organizationally a nightmare. If I had a pick, I'd be able to show you, okay, that when he's playing that string, the pick isn't hitting this, like at this angle, it's actually hitting the string at an angle like this. And it's because in general, Duff has his bass string, he's a low stringer, low stringer, low stringer? Anyway, he's hung down by his knees. So it means he's like picking like that and it gets this kind of sort of like grating against the string. Listen to the, listen to the tone, you'll hear it. Right on the front end of the note, there's like a <laughs> Now that's a real common thing with rock bass tone, rock bass, rock bass players, when they play with a pick, if that bass is strung low, they're gonna be hitting that string at an angle. It's gonna give just the aesthetic feel of that note, of the tone, a different vibe. So it's definitely something to look out for. Right, dudes, 1989, Mr. Big, Billy Sheehan addicted to that rush. So good. Got the Yamaha BB. Now the next one, I couldn't really pick which bass sound to go for for this particular player, so I've gone, I'm combining two, two tracks for this bass player. Bass player is Billy Gould, band Faith No More. Album is The Real Thing, okay, recorded in 1989. Now this first track is called Fall Into Pieces. Now Fall Into Pieces, for me, when you hear this, this the tonal kind of vibe of that Billy gets here, for me, I think that this was really like a launch pad for so many more bass players, really moving towards the like more metal genre as well. Just that sort of like top end scooped mids, like there's a, and then big bass, right? That's his sound on this specific track, which I believe has had a huge influence to a lot of metal bass players after this time. But remember man, this is back in 1989. Check it out, just a short clip. Hear them scooped mids. Now, I said there was two tracks, right? The second track, second track, check it out, is epic. epic. Okay, so I'm gonna play you a little bit of the original and then we're gonna listen to the isolated track because of the bass tone he gets and the attack on the note. Let's check it. We have a bit of love for Mike Patton as well. Okay, isolated bass track. Just check, just, ooh, like, just, it's so, like the compression on it, the, the drive, the, just the, it's like sucked in. It's got, oh! Look at that. 
So you're probably waiting for this one. Obviously, Rage Against Machine. Bass player, Timmy C. Bass. Music Man, I think. 1991. Classic. Scooped mid there. Definitely got his real, like his own personality. Bring that shit in. So this next track was recorded one year after the Rage track that you just heard. This was done in 1992. The band was Alice in Chains. The bass player was Mike Starr. The album was Dirt and the track is Wood. Now this, when I first heard this, it's just got again like a different aesthetic to the to the vibe. It was something new that I'd not really heard before and it definitely kind of drew me to, to the band, to the album, to the whole thing. But just what a great, great bass tone. Just oh, it's big, isn't it? It's like a wide and open sound. It's perfect for this for this mix. Just fills that bottom space. So next up is Mike Dern of Green Day. The track was, well, Longview and the album was Dookie, recorded in 1994. This is just, it's just like a great classic P-bass sound, but just like right up in the mix. You can hear he's got the pick. You can hear it's slightly angled as well. Just take what I was talking about before. Let's check it out. Hear the front end of the note there, that. <laughs> it's that low strung P-bass. Pick an angle. Sit and watch the so next up we've got Flea with the Chili Peppers. The album was California Cation, recorded in 1999. And the track here is Around the World. Just classic, like epic bass tone. I think everybody remembers hearing this if you were around when it first came out. It was just like, pfft. what's that? Check it out. Oh, oh. Like normally I would listen to that. If you played it in a different context, I'd be like, ooh, I'm not into that bass tone at all. But in this context, it's just ferocious. So good. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you like and subscribe this video down below. And if you've got any recommendations for other videos like this that you want us to do, make sure you put it in the comments. We read through these comments after every YouTube release. We'll go through, we'll pick stuff out and we will make it for you. So stick it in the comments. And obviously, if you want to find out anything more about what we do, go to scottsbasslessons.com with the ultimate online school for bass players like you. You can study with the best bass players on the planet in the comfort of your own home. That's crazy, right? Who knew modern technology would let us do this, right? So go to scottsbasessence.com, grab a 14-day free trial, try it for yourself, and hopefully I'll see you on the inside. Anyway, take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed.